Now, the president had lunch yesterday with the Senate Republicans. He's trying to rally support for this tax overhaul. Joining me right now is Mohammed El Arian. He is Allianz chief economic advisor. And Mohammed, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for having me. How important is tax reform getting done for the markets? Very important. And very important that it be done as part of a package that includes deregulation, infrastructure spending, and also some focus on skill acquisition. We need all that not only to boost actual growth, but also to boost potential growth. So yeah. it's very important. Do you think that it will move growth? I think that if done in a package, it will have a very positive impact on growth. But it's important that the message keep on going out that this is part of a very broad pro-growth program and that the administration and Congress can get things done. So for the first time in a long time, we're looking at fiscal policy versus what has been dominated by monetary policy, right? We had the central banks of the world easing so long. We've got an ECB meeting tomorrow and we got the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve. Uh, some uncertainty there. The president asked uh, Senate Republicans yesterday, who do you want to see in charge of the Fed? And apparently we're being told that the, the majority was unanimous that they said John Taylor. What would John Taylor, uh, what, what would a John Taylor Federal Reserve look like? So in first it would, be, it would be a Federal Reserve with a very strong economist at its head. And it's going to be really important to get the, the right vice chair as well because, because um, Stan Fisher has stepped down. Importantly, I don't think that the market is correct in reacting the way it has reacted to various indication of Fed share for a simple reason that Fed policy when it comes to reduction of balance sheet and interest rate is pretty set for the next six to nine months. Beyond that, yes, but we've seen too much emphasis, I think, on hawkish versus dovish. I think that, I think that the Fed is embarked on this beautiful normalization. More important is this handoff to other growth policies going back to tax reform, to deregulation, right. to infrastructure. That's critical. What about the ECB? What are you expecting out of the ECB meeting tomorrow? So if the markets were to worry about one central bank, it would be the ECB. Okay. Um, the ECB faces a very difficult situation. The recovery is not as advanced as it is in the U.S. It's trying to make policies for 19 countries that are very different. It has its own transition coming up in its leadership. So don't underestimate the challenge facing the ECB. Tomorrow, I suspect we're going to get an announcement of a gradual reduction in its purchase, and they will try to make it conditional. But if they make a mistake, that is going to have a huge impact on our yields, on the dollar, and on markets. Is that expected in markets right now, that they're going to be gradually take it down at this point? Yes. I think what the market expects is that they will reduce the pace of purchases by about half, from 60 million to 30 million a month, and that they won't do anything on interest rates. And that's critical. That's wow. what the market expects. And I suspect that's what the ECB will deliver. So what's the risk here? You got the, you know, you're saying if the ECB makes a mistake, and then you've got the risk of the Federal Reserve winding down its four and a half trillion dollar balance sheet. Yeah. These two things happening together. Yeah. And that's, at, at a time when the markets are at record highs. So Maria, that speaks to a fundamental issue. The market has understood that one central bank can normalize in an orderly fashion. What the market doesn't know is what happens if more than one central bank. And remember, we have potentially four central banks, the Fed, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, and the People's Bank of China. So what the marketplace is going to have to figure out is can you have more than one central bank normalized at the same time? Right. And that's going to be absolutely critical. What do you want to do as, as far as allocating capital right now? So I think you've got to be more barbell. What do I mean by that? Is appreciate that we are on a wonderful journey, that the market has delivered great returns, and rightly so, but that we have run ahead of the policy implementation. So if you continue on this journey, remain highly liquid, be, be sure that you're diversified in terms of market exposure, and yes, continue to buy the dip, because I think the, the conditioning of the market has been so strong that we will continue to fade any correction. Wow. F fade correction? Yeah. The market has been conditioned to believe that any dip is a buying opportunity. Right. Because guess what? It has proven it has incredibly been. profitable. <laughs> right. So it takes a major shock to shake that conditioning. Mohammed, it's great to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for weighing in this morning. Thank Mohammed you so much. Mohammed El Arian joining us there. Come